University of Notre Dame professors Christopher Fox and Brina Nekdarmada are executive producer and creator producer, respectively, of the 1916 The Irish Rebellion documentary, which you saw earlier this year here on WGBY and nationally on PBS. They told us for them, working on the program was a painful but valuable labor of love. One of the things we learned from Ken Burns was, um, one of the things that struck him about Ken Burns so forcibly was the intimate way that he told the story of the Civil War. You know, and as Chris said, something that was still, still fairly painful and has that kind of <coughs> psych psychic res residue here in the States. And 1916 is the same for Irish people, you know? Mm -hmm. And the other thing I suppose we wanted to do, because the University of Notre Dame has long historical links with Ireland, uh, and of course with Irish America, and without Irish America, 1916 would not have happened. Let's so talk the, about that. I mean, Irish Americans... Yeah. Provided the the fuel, the really. Six in the fuel. They they provided the inspiration in the first instance. You had people like John Devoy, an unrepentant Fenian, uh, who, as one of our contributors, Professor Tom Bartlett said, never ceased a day that he didn't try to bring around about the destruction of the British Empire. And he was a dedicated revolutionary. He'd been in jail in England, came over to the States, was exiled to the US. Uh, people like Joseph McGarity in Philadelphia, again, a hugely important figure. And the, the leaders themselves, uh, five of the seven signatories spent time in the US mm -hmm. before 1916. And, and money. Money and from money. American, money home. Irish Americans. They said Irish Americans sent money home. They gave them political and moral support. So as, as Professor Jolie in NYU says, a fantastic Irish historian, he said, uh, no... New York City, no Irish America, no ri rising in 1916. So we wanted to bring that out and to tell that story, which is untold, and to put back in as well other parts of the story that have been dropped off, you know, um, particularly in Ireland. Uh, we, we went from sort of canonization back in the 50th anniversary, right, to amnesia and demonization during the Troubles, you know, because mm -hmm. the Irish state didn't really want to look at violent revolution in 1916. They were afraid it would, you know, it would give succor to what they call the men of violence in the North. So I think now 100 years on, and particularly given that we're coming from the University of Notre Dame, we're coming from the States, we have that perspective, we were able to put back in an international perspective. We wanted to let the, the, the kind of facts uh, yeah. the, the, and the story tell itself. But uh, as, as, as we worked with, uh, with scholars all over the world, uh, it, it, it became clear that it, it was really a, a story about the breakup, the breakup of the empire. And, uh, and 1916 had long-term ramifications in, in India in the, in the 1930s, in Egypt in the 1960s. Uh, it, it really is a, a, a global a global story. It was really, uh, the, you know, for the British Empire, it was really the beginning of the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear this was happening in the middle of World War I yeah. in Europe. Britain is certainly stretched out there. A lot of Irish soldiers in the British Army fighting, and yet this is going on at home. Easter Monday, 1916, the rebels seize the General Post Office. They declare the Irish Republic. They're ready for a fight, but... In your research, in, in, in your talking to people, did they, did they have a sense of the massive British firepower that would come down on them, do you think, or were they surprised by that? Uh, a little bit of both. They knew that, you know, and by, by Easter Monday, when they eventually got out to fight, um, they were facing insurmountable odds, you know, and they, they knew it. They knew they were going out to be defeated, and yet to strike a blow was better than striking no blow at all. Um, they'd had a countermanding order. There was all sorts of mess-ups and uh, complications in the lead-up to the Rising, you know. Um, but they knew that they want, they, they, what they were doing was, they, in their own life, was saving the soul of Ireland. Showing the world that Ireland was not going to lie down, that Ireland was not an acquiescent part of the British Empire, that there were still Irish men and Irish women who were prepared to die, not on the fields of France for, for British imperialism or for the British Empire, but for Ireland and for an Irish Republic, most importantly. What do you want people to take away from this more than anything else? We had somebody come up to us in, 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 in Dublin uh, and uh, say uh, to Brina, thank you for giving us back our history. Uh, we had, uh, uh, in, in, in Ireland, it was uh, shown over three weeks. A couple came up to me and they forced their teenage son to watch this thing under great duress on a Wednesday night. They said, this is your history, this is important. They came back Sunday, they went shopping, they came back. He was re-watching it, but he had all of his friends there. If it contributes in any way to a greater understanding of what, what happened in Ireland during those years and that people can then take resonance from it for their own situations, their own historical situations and current situations, then we will be, our work will have been not in vain. Christopher Fox, 
being in the camera. Thank you both for your time. Thanks for Thank you, coming to see us.